since I mentioned it in my last video, um, I thought I'd discuss The Princess and the Frog in this one. I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a good movie. Um, I love Cecilia. I love Tiana. I love Naveen. I love Charlotte. I love everybody. How could you not? I mean, these were fun characters. This was a fun movie. The colors were fantastic. But it had problems. It had a lot on its plate because this was the first black princess. So there were a lot of expectations. There were a lot of changes that had to be made from start to finish. It wasn't going to be perfect, we all knew that, but at the same time, we didn't expect these kinds of problems. To start with, some of the songs aren't that great. I mean, I still have them on my iPod, I still like to listen to them, but they don't measure up to the songs of the past with their power and their messages. Personally, I think a fantastic Disney song is made when it can be taken out of context of the movie and just sung at almost anywhere. Akuna Matata, Part of Your World. These songs, you could sing them almost at any function and they would almost work. Because they're fun, because they have different meanings, they have different levels. But when you have songs like When I'm Human, they just kind of fall flat. Uh, the whole slapstick thing with the hunters on the boat just seems so out of place. I mean, I know it was supposed to serve as Tiana and Naveen learning how to use their frog abilities, but it was just, it just seems so last minute and so unnecessary. Another problem I thought, I mean, I love Charlotte. I think she's hilarious. I think she's adorable. I think that what's the thing is when you ask a lot of people who their favorite character was from this movie a lot of times you'll hear her name and that's a problem when your white character outshines your black character and the movie's point is supposed to highlight the black character. It's not their fault. I don't think they meant to do this. But Char Charlotte becomes so lovable and so much more interesting a character that she kind of overshadows Tiana. And speaking of Tiana, as I said in the last video, she spends most of the movie as a frog. Granted, it's for plot purposes. But if you're going to build up that this is going to be a progressive, progressive film, that this is going to be your first black princess, and then you kind of ignore that for so much of the movie. It, it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't sit well with me. I may be taking this too far, or maybe too personally, even though I'm clearly as white as a ghost. So it's understandable that my opinion doesn't mean much. After all, this is just a 24-year-old depressed person just trying to distract himself. But I should hope that if you're going to try and make a progressive movie, if you're going to try and expand your horizons and include more colors in what's, let's face it, a very marketable, very important part of the Disney franchise, then you should work a lot harder to show why this is important. And it's upsetting that since then we've gone back to white European princesses with Tangled and the upcoming Frozen. The thing is, just because you have one princess of one color doesn't mean you're done. Doesn't mean that's enough. That's not fair. Why should little girls only have one person they can relate to. Why should there be a quota? There are fascinating stories from all around the world of all colors, of all creeds, but 
they've been actively choosing not to go with them. I hope that'll change. I hope they can learn from the mistakes of Princess and the Frog, because, despite my complaints, I seriously enjoy this movie. Um, I loved Lewis. I thought Ray really broke my heart. When, when he died, I thought, yeah, right, like they'd really do it. And I kept staring at the screen, thinking, all right, when's it going to happen? When's the big magic thing that's going to bring him back to life going to happen? And it didn't. And I was stunned that Disney would go that far. And I loved it. That they made this a serious issue and they stuck with it. And I was, it made me so sad and happy at the same time I wound up crying, which I, I don't do the full movies that much anymore. And I still love Tiana as a person. We need more hard-working individuals who achieve the dreams by their own means. Naveen is hilarious. And Mama Odie is a very interesting character. And as for villains, you can't go wrong with Basilie because... How could you not love him? He's got the voice. He's got the perfect song. He's... And th that ending, oh my god, it scared the shit out of me. He is fantastic. In fact, I really recommend they release an, an album. I think it's called Bayou Boogie or something like that. For songs they didn't use in the movie. For songs that were inspired by the movie, I guess you could say. And Keith David so sang songs in there. They're just... Ugh, God, the voice. So I guess I'm just rambling at this point. I guess I should just wrap it up. So, yeah, Princess and the Frog, it's a good movie, but it it's not a perfect movie by no means. It is not the landmark movie we had hoped for. It is a learning point, definitely. And it is something I still would recommend to, to be, for people to watch. I still think it's a very good movie. It's just a huge learning experience for the next ones to come, I hope.